Hi, I'm Russell Franks and I'd like to tell you about the use of web forms for slightly more complex form building using conditional rules. To set up a conditional rule, open the form as an admin user, click on the questions tab and choose the question you want to place a rule on. In this example, we will use a set of radio buttons to show three possible routes through the form. Let's take a look at the user experience when using forms with rules and conditions. Here is an example of a form with conditional rules being used by an admin user on behalf of a member. The admin user chooses the form from a list of available forms and then chooses the member he or she is completing the form on behalf of. When the screen redraws, the form is completely as normal. We've placed some conditional rules on the last page. Take a look at how they work. There are three possible routes and each route hides and displays certain questions. Here, route A shows a few general fields, but if route B is selected, there's a further set of options displayed. If route C is selected, then other different questions can be shown. A couple of things to take note of here are that it's possible to nest rules and you'll notice the second set of choices has different fields that are shown for each option. And secondly, if you specify any question as mandatory, it only enforces this if the question is visible. So how do we define these rules? We have tried to make this process as easy as possible and we have built some intelligent processing into the system. This example shows a question with three choices and for each choice there is one rule defined. What should happen if route 1 is selected? And what if route 2? And finally, what if route 3? The system intelligently hides and shows the females that are needed to allow the presentation of the correct choices for each route. Next release, we will be providing some additional features to show and hide whole pages, and this will provide even more flexibility. Imagine a joining form with three or four different membership levels. Rather than having four separate forms, you can construct one form that has a range of different questions applicable to just that grade of membership. OK, so let's look in more detail at what we need to enter to create a rule. It's pretty self-explanatory, but on first sight it can appear to be complex and does need some planning. First thing is to ensure that all the questions you want to place rules on or which are affected by rules are added before you start creating those rules. On the outer rule screen, all you need do is give the rule a name and a description, say if it's active or not, and then use Boolean logic to define what you want to do. For example, you might say that if the radio button value equals blue, then show six specific fields you've set up previously. You can also do not equal to, less than, more than, and all the usual compares, so there's a lot of flexibility. Take a look at the on success box. This shows the four main actions the system can do if the criteria is met. Most commonly, you'll use show and hide. When you set up radio buttons, you'll set up a code and a description. So if you have code B and description as wicked, like in this example, you need to ensure the comparison value is B and not wicked, which is the description. Not every form is best created with conditional rules. Sometimes it's better to use the web form's clone feature and take a copy of a form and change it. This really couldn't be easier. Here you can see the process of cloning. Simply open the form you want to clone, hit the clone button, and the system saves the new form definition. Good practice says that you should change the name and description immediately. The clone form will have been given a unique index value to keep it apart from the original, and you can then edit the questions and logic of the clone and save it. Remember, you do need to build form at the end of this process, as the clone process will only clone the form definition as opposed to build the IMIS business objects, but that's easy enough to do at the end of the process. So what can we tell you at the end of this session? Well, planning is very important. Practice is even more important. You may be interested to know that once you've defined a set of um, conditional rules that the same rules apply for rendering both to WCM and to the back office so you only need to do this job once. We hope you have fun building iMIS web forms. Thank you very much for watching.